We're gonna talk about what lifting your butt while you're benching does, and if it actually ruins your entire lift, and we're gonna start right now. So one of the most consistent arguments against lifting your butt, there's gonna be three or four, it's gonna be, you're actually not that strong, you know, it's, you're cheating the lift, you're gonna hurt your back, and it's actually just completely pointless. Okay, so these are a couple big arguments against lifting your butt. And so if we talk about what, what actually happens when you're bench pressing and you do lift your butt. So we're here, we're gonna warm up, and you sit, and you, you take this slow eccentric, and what you'll see a lot of kids do is that as they get down to their chest, they'll come up and they'll get almost that big, big hip drive here, okay? Like this, okay? And especially as they start to grind out a lift, they'll, ow, I just hit my head on the fat bar. They'll start to actually lift their butt. Now, does this actually hinder any strength gains? Does this actually hinder, uh, can it lead to all these issues? These are some important topics that we've got to discuss. But where does this really even originate from? And a lot of it has been made popular. A lot of butt lifting has been made popular from shot putters, okay? From big time shot putters. Somebody like Werner Gunther, way back in the day, has videos of him, he's a three time world champ, even lifting his butt. He's an Olympic bronze medalist as well. Growing up, full disclosure, I was a butt lifter, okay? I would always lift my butt, especially when I started to grind through those weights. And so my high school strength coach actually called it the shot put bench, okay? He would always say, oh, all the shot putters, they tend to use that hip drive pretty hard, so again, it might look something like this, where we're here, drive the hips, okay? Drive the hips up. Okay, so when we go through that, what is actually happening? That's what we have to understand, is that what's happening from a biomechanical aspect, so now we can break down, does this actually hinder growth, or can it actually improve different aspects that we're trying to train? Okay, so that first big question is gonna be, can you actually use more weight when you're lifting your butt on the bench. Okay, so let's let's actually do this here and look at a couple big things. If I take the bar off with that with my butt up, what's gonna happen here is now I'm actually shortening that range of motion slightly. Okay, so my chest is usually gonna be here, but now it's up just about one one to two inches. Okay, so it's slightly shortening that range of motion. I'm also going to get that extra hip drive. Okay, I'm gonna have my hips extended, my glutes are actually lifting me off the bench, uh, my quads are lifting me off the bench, uh, my hamstrings are extending my, my pubic bone off of the bench. So that provides a little bit more force that in turn gets driven to my shoulders as I'm pressing. So answering that first question, yes, you can use more weight when you're lifting your butt in the bench press. So that second big question is gonna be, it, does this lead to more internal rotation and does internal rotation lead to more problems? This is a little bit more of a gray area. And now, now think about my hips are gonna be a little bit higher. I'll demonstrate again. So my hips are gonna be up a little bit more here, okay? So it shortens that range of motion and what we discussed. And yes, I am gonna be internally rotated just a little bit more, okay? Just a little bit more. Now, can that lead to injuries or problems? Yes, anything in lifting can lead to injuries or problems, okay? Executing a perfect back squat can still injure someone if they sneeze during the lift or if they get a little bit out of the position. So if you are actually lifting your butt and while you're doing so, you're, you're maintaining upper body stability, you're, you're working on your thoracic mobility, you're working on you know things like dumbbell external rotations, banded external rotations, you're probably gonna be okay, but you do need to be aware that there can be some issues around some more internal rotation. And that's gotta be figured out and even if you're benching without your butt up, that should all be taken care of with proper programming. And if you need help with that proper programming, click on the link down below, pick up our plateau breaker bench press, but we've got a couple more questions. Here's where we really, really gotta give the butt lifting crowd, myself, <laughs> yeah, boy. a bigger boost here, okay? We have to remember that you can use a little bit more weight because there's that shorter range of motion, because you have more hip drive. Okay, you can use more weight. So what does that mean? If, if I can use more weight, now 
I could put, let's say my best bench press of all time is 500 pounds. If I wanna work at 90 to 95% and hit a couple doubles there, that's gonna be what? That's gonna be 460, 470, 480, somewhere in that realm, right? If I wanna improve with greater eccentric overload, because I'm lifting my butt, now as I go through the eccentric action, Okay, now I can actually handle even more weight because I'm lifting my butt, because I'm shortening that range of motion. Now, one thing that a lot of shot put coaches, discus throw coaches, is we like to use pads, okay? So what ends up happening is we can actually use a little bit more weight and we can raise those hips up off the bench. And a lot of shot putters do this. In turn, we actually wanna train that turnaround period, that amortization period, right? So that, that stretch shortening period. So now, if I have greater eccentric overload, okay, because I'm lifting my butt, I can hold more weight, I'm gonna train, I'm gonna strengthen my triceps, which is pivotal to locking out a traditional bench press, but also really pivotal to other sports uh, like wrestling, like throwing, like football. So now, if I use a pad, if I put a pad on my chest, okay, now I can actually train this more eccentric load, and then I can get this little bit of a bounce off the pad while lifting my butt. And as I'm lifting that bar off of my chest, it's even shortening the range of motion just a slight bit here, but I'm still getting that stretch because as it makes contact on the pad, it actually sort of folds over. Okay, so the bar is getting greater contact. I'm lengthening my pecs even more. I'm driving my triceps even more from that, that stretch position. So that slow eccentric is gonna trigger more high threshold motor units to be activated. And then as it's lengthened, my nervous system's firing like crazy and I'm gonna drive up very, very rapidly. So it does help with improving strength gains because of that longer eccentric, because of that, that heavier eccentric. And if you use that pad, you're gonna even be able to improve the drive through the concentric action of the entire lift. Okay, so we know that we can use a little bit more weight. We know that there's a greater eccentric overload which can lead to greater strength gains. We know there's a, a little bit of a shortened range of motion. We know that it could potentially have some internal rotation issues if we're not programming properly and we're not using our plateau breaker bench press program. That's down in the description down below. If you head over to gradstrike.com, you can pick that up. So the next big discussion is going to be why do kids do this, okay? And, and why do athletes do this even if they're not shot putters? And, and the thing is, is there's a couple different facets. One, someone might just have poor bench press technique. They've never taught, they've never been taught how to get those feet, you know, anchored into the ground, how to squeeze their glutes into the bench and how to hug the bench with their shoulder blades. So they might be here instead of having those shoulder blades back squeezing here and we want to think about having the point at our feet into our glutes here and then into our shoulder blades as we're holding here to create that shelf so they might not have ever been taught how to bench properly okay the next step we have a lot of athletes here that might lift their butt they don't lift their butt at 85 80 percent weights but as they get to 95 or 100 percent 100 plus and they're starting to max out they just want to get the weight they just start to grind they just start to drive everything as hard as possible they might throw their technique out the window that happens with a lot of younger lifters and that needs to just be as a coach it's not detrimental if it's not hurting them and, and it can that lead to lower back stress yes there could be a lot of compression uh, in that lumbar spine. Yes, there's a very, very slight chance that someone could over, with chronic use, with chronic, chronic use, could develop a pars fracture. Uh, but you could also, you know, that could happen from football, that could happen from baseball, that could happen from even swimming to a point going into a flip turn. This happens with a lot of different sports. So you have to be aware that that's a potential issue. If we're dealing with mobility and if we're handling the hip girdle properly outside of bench pressing and we're teaching technique properly. And sometimes you see someone that is, you know, they do have good technique, but then when they go for a max effort, they try and just grind it out. They won't, they'll do anything to get that weight. It's likely not a big deal. And they just need to be aware that you just have to constantly make that progress from that technical perspective. So the big question then becomes, should you train butt lifting? Okay, if you're a shot putter, I don't think it's that bad to actually train that. Even some wrestlers, because you're, you're gonna be extending your hips and applying a lot of force. I don't think it's that bad. Now, we have to look at it as a tool, okay? Look at it as a tool. Try to improve your traditional bench press technique, okay? Try to improve that over and over and over again. 
And sometimes if you're going to lift your butt or you're using a pad and you're, you're lifting your butt while you're using that pad, it's okay because you're trying to strengthen your triceps. You're trying to strengthen through that eccentric muscular action. You might be trying to really drive and, and work through the sticking point right off of your chest. So there's a couple different reasons why you can do this and, and why you should, you should possibly do it and look at it as a tool. We've got you know, Olympians like Alex Rose who sometimes might lift his butt but even when he goes for a max, he's not lifting his butt. Same with you know, another Olympian, Sam Madison, a discus throw. He will lift his butt at times when he's actually training the bench, but when he goes for a max, he has better technique because he actually sometimes will train that technical perspective of the bench. So ideally, focus on improving your traditional bench press technique know what butt lifting could do and know that it could cause some issues with your lower back potentially it could cause some issues in your shoulders potentially but that it's also a potent tool that you can use to improve that eccentric control which will then lead to those big time strength gains so if you need help click on the description down below head over to garagestrength.com pick up our plateau breaker bench press program if you want more content around the bench press click on this card right here until next time guys peace <laughs>